It finally arrived after pre-ordering it almost two months ago. This is the Pine Phone, a Linux smartphone. That's super awesome because you can easily load various Linux distributions and really have a lot of fun with this device. Now this one specifically is the Mobian device that is a Debian based Linux operating system that is on a cell phone. So what we're gonna be doing today is unboxing this cell phone right here checking out what comes in the box as well as giving you my initial impressions on it and kind of running through the actual operating system and the device that we have in this box. So we can see here on the box that this Pine Phone, if I can get it right there, is the Pine Phone with three gigabytes of RAM, 32 gigabytes of internal storage. It's the more expensive one coming in at $899. There is a cheaper version for about $50 cheaper which will give you two gigabytes of RAM and 16 gigabytes of storage. So without wasting too much time, let's go ahead and uh, duh, 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 duh. let's go ahead and unbox this and see what we have included. So here is the box. We're just going to start off by giving this a quick cut to get it open. So with the box open, we could go ahead and pull it out. So we see it's from Pine64. It is the Mobian edition with kind of the Debian logo here. So now with that, we could go ahead and pop this box open and see the actual contents of the box. So two manuals here. We have the actual phone right here. So I'll get into that in just a second. In the actual box, we have a cord right here. So this is a red uh, USB type C connector. It looks like a pretty good charging cable. Uh, if we look in here, we have a little, that looks like a uh, SIM card tray right there. Uh, so I'll put that off to the side just in case if I need it. And then right here, this is a piece that's only included in the more premium version that I mentioned earlier. This, uh, this phone was $50 more than the cheapest model. This is a USB Type-C dock that comes with the phone I got. You see this? It is a Type-C cable here. And the dock includes Ethernet port as well as HDMI, normal HDMI, which is awesome because most phones like this come with some sort of micro HDMI. And I know I have one of these laying around, so that is awesome. It also includes two USB, uh, I think these are USB 2.0, but I'm not 100% sure. I'll go ahead and uh, leave that on the screen, whether if I was right or wrong. But this is really, really cool, especially playing with Linux, trying out different distributions. Some of them might not have Wi-Fi drivers or something like that, so you could go ahead and play around with this. So it is awesome that it comes with this. This is one of the reasons why I purchased the more expensive one, in addition to double the storage and another gigabyte of RAM. So now we are actually going to take a look at the phone here. Let's go ahead and take off this uh, plastic covering. If we get a little closer, we can see the Pine Phone logo there on the top next to the camera. Okay, so I'm just going to power this on. I have never used one of these. I've never watched any sort of video tutorial, so I'm just going to power it on like I'd assume you power on any other cell phone. So it's not coming on, so my first assumption, I'm going to whip out this charger real quick and see if it will turn on once we plug it in. Hold down the power button, and there we go. We see the Mobian screen, the Mobian boot screen. All right, so it says I'm about to install the Mobian Bullseye user interface, 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 uh, Posh Architecture ARM64 on your Pine Phone. Let's go ahead and continue doing that. Let's set a pin. Uh, just for this, I'm going to do one, two, three, four. I will change this later for sure. Must be at least five digits. So let's go ahead and add a five here. Let's go with one, two, three, four, five. Uh, I'm going to disable full disk encryption for now and go ahead and install this. So now we see that it is partitioning, formatting, and mounting target partitions. It will only take a little bit. So now it is running the install, and I'll be right back once it is all done finished doing that. All right, we are back and we are booting into the device. And full disclosure, it's actually been a couple hours. I had to do some troubleshooting. I learned quite a bit about this phone in the last few hours. Uh, one thing is you can see that it is not running off of uh, direct power anymore. Uh, all I really needed to do was take off the back, which actually I'll show you that real quick. This phone's really nice because it kind of has the old fashioned thing where you could actually take the thing apart and have full access to everything back here such as the battery, the SIM card, which I got my T-Mobile SIM card in there, 
and I believe this, you might be able to take this out, it says here this is the RAM and memory, but there are little screws so you might actually be able to interchange that so that would be super cool. There's also a spot for a um, expandable storage there, so that is really, really nice. So I'm going to go ahead and pop this on, show you some of the things I learned. Oh yeah, also the, um, the battery, there's that little plastic tab uh, in the battery. You need to take that out so it can have battery power. You also need to do that to get the Wi-Fi to work properly, so that is something that is good to know. So let's go ahead and swipe up here and actually get onto our phone. So first we're going to run through the applications it comes with as everything you'd expect as your phone messages that is the uh, GNOME web browser as well as contacts and here you have quite a bit of things it's fairly responsive but you do know it kind of laggy here and there. Uh, we have Firefox so that's an additional web browser we have chess, clocks, calculator basically anything you'd expect with a cell phone. We open it up calculator here you can see it's not the quickest thing in the world but it does the job the uh, typing is pretty responsive so 2 plus 2 equals 4 what do you know and one thing I really like about it is if you tap this button right here it will then bring up all your open applications so you see the only thing I have open is the calculator hit that and you can see everything that you have running in the background as well access to open up any other applications so to close out an application you just swipe up and the application is closed out. Now one thing I really really do enjoy about this is the quick and easy access to your phone's terminal. So you can see here I am now in the terminal. Uh, it took me a little bit because I had to set up a super user password. Uh, you just had to log in, it was sudo su and then the password for that was your pin and then you could do the uh, passwd command and then actually set up a sudo password. And to test this out I installed NeoFetch the number one most important application that you could have on any Linux device. So hit enter, you see it works. It's not really set up uh, screen wise to work that good and you can see it doesn't really have the uh, the functionality to go sideways. At least out of the gate I'm still kind of learning the device so you might actually be able to do that. But one thing that's really really cool is this is the Linux terminal so you could do just about anything. For example, if I go ahead and SSH into my media server, I could actually go ahead and control my server through this phone. So after fixing a little typo here, you could see I put in my local host for my media server, hit enter, and then I'm just going to type in my password real quick. So hit enter, and now it has logged into my media server. You see Hopkins at media, and now I have full control over my media server. Now you can do this on Android phones and things like that with other applications, but this is a use case that I'm actually going to be using this for. So for example, I can run htop on my media server and actually see a rundown of everything that's going on. Really cool. I really, really love having the uh, Linux terminal that easy. If you close it out, just like it would on a computer, it's going to ask you, are you sure you want to close the terminal? You have something actively running. For this, I'm going to hit OK and it brings me back to my application menu. So like I said, I do have a SIM card in here and it seems to be working completely fine. I'm doing this through T-Mobile, but you could do it on any network that does the well has the same bands as this phone and you can see it worked pretty good. So now one thing I'm going to show you real quick here is the web browser. This is kind of the uh, default web browser and you can see here I opened it, but it took it a sec. This isn't the snappiest experience, but this uh, ARM64 and the uh, Linux ecosystem that this phone runs is fairly new, so it will get better and better as time goes on. Let's try out a website here. Let's go to one of the best websites that you could possibly go to, and that is techhut.tv. Hit enter, and we're going to see how quick this loads. It is on my home Wi-Fi, which is gigabit, so it's basically the bottleneck at this point is the phone itself and the website is a very very light website. So you saw how long that took. Not too long, but longer than it maybe should have. But as I said, this phone isn't like the highest spec thing in the world. And you can see the uh, graphics rendering is subpar at best. But overall, I still love the device. Uh, we'll do one quick more scroll here through the applications before I kinda wrap up this portion of the video. Uh, software. So let's go ahead and see what software is available. This is an application I actually have not yet opened. So this is my first experience looking at this. 
Uh, we see our editor's picks, things we already have installed. We have uh, recent releases, uh, games, graphics, photography, add-ons, developer tools. So let's go ahead under utilities and see what they have. If it didn't just crash. I think it just crashed. So you will experience uh, crashes and stuff like that with this phone. Oh, not with this phone in particular. This is the Mobian uh, operating system. I am going to be trying out uh, the, the Manjaro KDE uh, mobile version on this phone to see if it's any better because according to the uh, PinePhone team that they are actually going to be going with Manjaro as their default operating system for these phones. So the main problem I can see myself having with this phone is how much I'm going to be distro hopping around various mobile Linux distributions. It's really, really going to be fun to work with. It's really going to be fun to make uh, video presentations like this with. And it's going to be a good time doing nice little projects. I kind of look at this as a uh, really good Raspberry Pi with a touch screen because of just the all the different things you could do with it, especially with that dock included, it's gonna be really, really fun to see how far I can actually push this device. Now, if you are interested in purchasing this specific device or any other Pine phone, there'll be a link in the description so you could go ahead and check those out. And please go ahead and go down to the comment section down below, leave a comment with what you think of Pine phones in general and maybe suggestions for what you might want to see when it comes to different projects, uh, mobile Linux distributions, anything like that. Really, I really am excited to check this out more. But I do hope you have a good day. Thank you to my Patreon subscribers or supporters. You guys mean the world to me. Uh, if you'd like to become a Patreon supporter, it would help me out quite a bit. There'll be a link in the description down below, but if you do not want to or cannot do that, simply liking this video, subscribing, and watching future content, maybe sharing it with your friends, stuff like that, that all helps and it means the world. But once again, you have a great day and goodbye.